Hmm. What's up, guys? KS here. Thanks for joining me today, as always. Earlier in the year 2018, I reviewed the CZP01 Omega Tactical, and I absolutely loved it. The urban gray finish, the threaded barrel, the suppressor height sights, it was fantastic. It was a lot of fun to run a can on it, but that wasn't really the gun that I was after. I was actually after the P01 Omega Black. Yes, I call it the Omega Black. That's not its official name, but that helps me differentiate the different models. So if you hear me say that from time to time, that's exactly why. Now, CZ tends to put out their firearms in waves. I'm sure we've all noticed that there. So there are times where the model that you're after isn't available. So it was kind of a waiting game for the Omega Black, but I finally ran across it at Centerfire Shooting Sports, my home away from home, and it was a used model. And I'll tell you what, whoever owned it before hardly put a round through it. So it was really in fantastic shape and I got a killer deal on it. And anytime I can find a used gun that's in great shape and uh, pay a fair price for it, I'm all about that. Now the M MSRP on the PO1 Omega Black is $627, but I think you can generally find them around the $555.75 mark, perhaps a little bit less, so you guys will have to shout out down below and let me know what deals you found on this. All right, let's jump in and take a look at the PO1 Omega Black. Now, one thing you guys have been asking for, and this is why I've widened the camera angle a little bit, is more direct comparisons during these videos. So I brought out the Glock 19 Gen 5 MOS. Now, forgive the red dot and forgive the threaded barrel. I've been doing some work on this gun, more on that at a later time, but just to give you kind of an idea of where the PO1 sits. I mean, it basically is the size of a Glock 19. Now, it's gonna weigh 28 ounces versus the Glocks. I, you know, I don't have the specs in front of me. I'm not sure if it's 24, 23 ounces, something like that. Be sure to correct me down in the comments. But again, they are very similar in size. And then one other comparison I wanted to make is with its bigger brother, the SP01. Now this is the SP01 Shadow. I, it's long overdue for a review. I swear it's coming at some point in time. But uh, but just to kind of give you an idea of size, again, we'll line these guys up. And that SP01, I think I just bumped the camera. The SP01 is definitely going to be a full size firearm. So just to give you kind of an idea there. So I uh, hope that helps a little bit. Let's tighten up the camera and take a deeper dive into this thing. All right, we've tightened the camera back up. So just a couple of things about the PO1 Omega Black. Now this is double action, single action. It's the Omega system. So it does have the decocker on it right now. However, you can swap this for safety. So if you'd rather carry it cocked and locked, you can definitely do that. In terms of finish, it does have a, a CZ poly coat on it, just like that. I love the CZ coating. I think it looks fantastic. I think it's very robust. It's a classy look. I like that quite a bit. Now I like the urban gray as well that tactical was fantastic, but there's just something about this that uh, is extra special in my heart. All right, let's walk through some features of this real quick. Now, you'll notice that the grips on this are actually a little bit different. Uh, the standard grips that come with this are actually kind of a rubberized grip just to give you an idea of what this looks like. I don't care for these grips at all. I know some people really like them and they do just fine, and I'll admit that's true. However, if I can dial in the grips just a little bit on my CZs, I'm gonna do it every time. And you guys know I'm a huge fan of lock grips. I'm uh, flashing their website down below, and I contacted Jason over at Lock and said, man, I've got a PO1 Omega. Let's do something really fun and special. Now, I'm Irish. I love the color green. So he put together some thin checkered grips on this, and he threw the shamrock on it and the green liner. And I have to say, I absolutely love it. The thin checkered grips are what I have on almost all of my guns in the collection. I really like them. It's just a good fit for me. They're a little bit thinner than some of the other grips out there, and, uh, and, and they're just fantastic. So if you're curious about the grips and want to check them out, be sure to go to Lock, uh, lock Grips and uh, see what they've got out there. Now, in terms of the rest of the grip around here, we do have some vertical stripes, some vertical serrations on the back, and, uh, and they're fine. I wish, actually, there was some more checkering on this like some of its bigger brothers. However, However, this will still serve and it's the same on the front of the grip as well. So at least they did take the time to do some milling on this. So there's a little bit of grip there as well. And with these grips on the sides, it definitely stays planted in the hand. And one other thing about this, there is just a little bit of a bevel in the magwell. The camera always hates when I do this, but just to give you an idea, this helps put uh, magazines back in, magazine insertion of course, especially if you're speed reloading or anything like that. And it's a great attention to detail. I love that CZ does that with their firearms. 
Now, in terms of the magazine release, it's the standard CZ magazine release. Nothing terribly special about it. It's not ambient out of the box, although I understand you can swap these around. There are a few parts you have to kind of tinker with a little bit on the interior of the gun, but uh, but you can definitely do that. So if you're curious, now the uh, the decocker is on both sides, and that I believe would be the same on the safety. You guys will have to correct me if I'm wrong. I've never run a safety on one of these before, so don't have a lot of experience with that. Again, I'm a fan of the decocker. And then your slide lock slide release definitely does a good job. And actually the placement of this really isn't bad. I mean, it's a little bit of a reach for me and I've got pretty long fingers, although my thumbs aren't nearly as long, uh, but it definitely works. You can use it and then you can run your decocker. So that's kind of nice. Um, I'll probably take this down here in just a little bit to give you an idea of what, what it looks like on the inside. Now, one other thing about CZs, and it's the same with a lot of the CZs out there, these slide rails are on the inside of the frame. And um, some say that 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 helps with recoil and a muzzle flip and that sort of thing. It just makes that slide a little bit lower, and uh, and I, I like that. That means that uh, that more of that uh, the gun, more of the uh, the shock that you're going to be absorbing when you're shooting is coming straight back at you rather than going up. So I believe that to be true as well. You know, your mileage may vary there, of course, but that's your controls on the PO1. And the only other thing going on, it does have an accessory rail, so it's a little bit different than some of its other compact brothers like the PCR, which doesn't have the rail, it's more the traditional CZ75 look, whereas this follows that SP01. In terms of the slide, there are several things that are very similar with some of the other CZs out there. Again, I said the slide's going to be a little bit lower, of course, since it's tucked into the frame, but we do have front and rear serrations, and I have to say, guys, they work. They absolutely work. You can really grip them. Um, you can use an overhand rack. You can uh, you can rack it the uh, the old school way by pulling back. You know whatever it happens to be. I, I've never found the real estate to be too big of an issue with CZs, even though that slide is sitting a little bit lower. Now it does have some serrations on the top to reduce glare. It's a really nice attention to detail. I like that quite a bit. And then in terms of the sights, now this one came with some of those phosphorescent sights. In other words, they have to gather ambient light and they'll grow, uh, grow, they'll glow <laughs> for a period of time. I'm not a big fan of these sights. Now they're pretty easy to pick up at the range, but in terms of uh, self-defense, I much prefer night sights or even some fiber optics, something like that. However, I've chosen for the time being to just leave this pretty plain Jane. And um, I've been focusing on some other firearms in the collection. Again, more on that at a later time, but uh, there are definitely some some other sight options out there uh, if you want to mix it up a little bit. So uh, otherwise, that's your, uh, your features and your specs, all that kind of good stuff. The shooting experience with the PO1 Omega Black is absolutely fantastic. Again, I, I make no bones about it. This is one of my favorite guns in the collection. So having an excuse to go out, take it to the range, and put some rounds through it, I, I never balk at that. Um, it's a lot of fun. The uh, the trigger, the Omega system is great. Now I'm going to dive into that a little bit more here in just a moment. But the fact that you can get a full grip on this, the ergonomics are definitely solid. Um, it just is a highly shootable firearm. It's easy to get uh, back on target and track those sights. Um, it just feels really good to shoot. Now, the PO1 Omega Black does have another sibling, just the regular PO1, with that more accentuated curved trigger. Um, the, the internals work just a little bit differently with that, and it's not swappable between safety and decocker. I like the PO1, and it's a fine gun. I prefer the Omega trigger out of the box. It's just a little bit more streamlined. Again, we'll dive into that trigger here in just a moment. But for those who want to do more tinkering with the firearms, I find that uh, the regular PO1 would probably be more up your alley, because you can switch the trigger, you can shorten up uh, the reset, the distance that it travels, that sort of thing. Cajun Gunworks has a lot of different parts out there, so that might be worth exploring if you're the kind of person that really wants to tinker and put a little bit more money in the firearm to really dial it in and make it your own. I've been saying that the shooting experience with the PO1 Omega Black is a lot of fun, and, and it absolutely is. Now, one thing that makes this a lot of fun, of course, is going to be your trigger. Now, we're going to take a look at this for a moment or two. Like I said, it's double action, single action, and the double action pull on this is pretty stout. Um, it's coming in over 11 pounds, and uh, it's a little bit inconsistent on the gauge. Gauges tend to not like those heavier triggers, at least when I'm pulling them. So, definitely 11 pounds, probably a little bit more than that. Now, I will say, 
the trigger pull is very smooth. There's no doubt about it. Uh, no speed bumps, nothing like that, no grit or anything, but it is a stout pull. Now there's an advantage to that. If you're carrying this, especially appendix, you've got that heavy double action pull that serves basically as a safety. So if you snag on any clothes or anything, the chances of this going off are extremely slim. Now let's take a look at that reset here for a moment or two. There's your reset and then your take up, you definitely do have some air. You have some take up before you get back to your wall. And then the single action pull on this is coming in at about four pounds uh, pretty consistently. There's your single action pull. I want to show you that reset again in that air. So there's your reset. There's that take up. Now, that's the one thing about this. When I'm shooting a CZ, especially something like the Omega system, I always have to kind of retrain my brain a little bit to recognize that uh, that from the reset back to the wall, there's a fair amount of distance. It's not real short. Now, there are a couple things you can do, I think, to dial this in a little bit more. Some springs you can change, that sort of thing. You could certainly make it a lighter trigger if you want. Sound off down below if you've done that before. But again, out of the box, this is fantastic. But just knowing that there's a little bit of that dead air. Now, if you spend a lot of time with double action single action triggers that's not going to be an issue for you at all it always it always takes me a little while to get back into that and just kind of remind myself but i'll tell you the last shooting experience i had with this and i've take, taken this to the range multiple times the, the last shooting experience was just fantastic uh, there was a good connection there you guys know we all have days where we connect and we don't connect and um, it always feels good when you run a gun really well at the range all right, let's take a look at the disassembly here for just a moment or two. Of course, again, it is unloaded. Now, you guys will notice that there are a couple of lines, one on the frame and one on the slide. These guys have to be lined up. Now, you're going to want to press this little button once those lines are lined up. And what I typically do is I'll actually I'll hold the firearm so they're lined up with my left hand. And then I take actually a Glock tool and you have to be kind of careful to make sure you don't mess up the finish or anything like that. But then you're going to get your release and I'll just set that aside. And then you can just kind of pull it apart. And of course it's going to fight me just a little bit, but, uh, but it generally comes apart a little bit easier than that. And there you go. There are all your parts. I mean, you've got your uh, guide rod assembly, not a big deal. You've got your barrel, of course. You've got your slide and your frame. So there's your disassembly. Um, all the maintenance ex is extremely easy. You can get a better idea of the rails. They go all the way front to back, which is fantastic. I mean, these are incredibly sturdy guns. And then to put it all back together, we take our barrel, put that back in, our guide rod and spring assembly, and we just want to make sure that that is lined up. And there's a little notch. In fact, I'll show you real quick. There's a little notch on the spring, kind of a little dimple right there. And you want to make sure that you get that fully seated right there. So it's sitting really nice and snug. And then you'll put your frame back on, make sure everything is lined up properly. And then you're basically ready to go. You can put your takedown lever back in. Now it's going to sit out kind of like this. So you're going to have to start moving your slide and it'll almost immediately pop in. You'll see that it's kind of ready to go. Line those lines back up, slide to frame, push in the button and you are done. So actually the disassembly is uh, is pretty easy on this. It does take a tool or at least it does for mine. Uh, some people can actually get those things out on their own. I find it to be a little bit too much. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to either <laughs> hurt myself or hurt the gun. So some sort of plastic tool or wooden tool, something uh, helps a little bit, but there you go. So guys, what do I think of the CZ P01 Omega Black overall? Well, overall, I think it's a phenomenal firearm. Again, this is one of my favorite guns in the collection. Now, there's some other things that are really cool about it. Now, it's 14 rounds in the magazine, but you can switch this out for other 75 magazines. So if you've got an 18 rounder or something like that, or maybe even bigger, you can definitely run with those as well. So it's a really nice advantage. You know, some of the other uh, polymer wonders out there like Glocks can do that. Well, so can CZ. So um, you're not losing any uh, advantages there at all. And that's uh, one of the great things about it. But otherwise, the ergos are there. It feels great. The quality of build on CZs, I think, is just phenomenal. I, I truly do. And uh, perhaps I'm a little bit biased. CZ is right down the road for me, but uh, uh, but I still think they make great firearms. And coming in at about the size of a Glock 19, I really think it's the Goldilocks zone for firearms, at least in my mind, because you can carry it, you can take it to the range, you can compete with guns of this size. Uh, 
them. You can make home defense guns out of them, truck guns, whatever it happens to be. They can serve almost any role. So again, I think it's kind of that Goldilocks size. So guys, if you have the opportunity to check out a PO-1 or a PO-1 Omega or the Omega Tactical, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. They're great builds. They're not that expensive, to be honest with you. They're about the cost of a Glock, unless you can find a used one, and then you might be able to find a better deal out there, but it's highly worth it. So guys, I want you to sound off. Let me know your experiences with CZ PO-1s. I'm always looking forward to talking with you. Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time.